Well, good day to each of you. Uh, you know, it, it, sometimes we feel like we're alone, uh, especially when we're open, especially if it's in the mornings, but you're not alone. We're together in this, and you know, there are many other people joining in with us various times during the day, doing the same thing, just opening the Bibles for a Devo today, just wanting to get a little bit of spiritual insight. Um, I know some of you that are, are doing this together, maybe as a couple, you're doing this with your spouses or you're talking about it later, you're doing it individually and then talking about it. Good for you. Man, what a great thing. Anytime we can you know, revolve our life and our marriages and our families around the Word of God, God is going to bless. God is going to move in your lives. And you know, nothing better than just grabbing a good solid little nugget from the Word and kind of musing on it, contemplating on it, it thinking through it throughout the course of any given day. Verse 1 of chapter 17 of uh, 1 Chronicles says, Now it came to pass when David was dwelling in his house that David said to Nathan the prophet, See how I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. Remember, the ark represented the presence of God, and he's saying God's holy place is dwelling in this tent, and I live in this cool place. You know, this is, I'm paraphrasing a little bit there, but that's basically what he's saying. Then Nathan says in verse 2 uh, to David, he said, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. This is what his response immediately. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, You shall not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought up Israel even brought up Israel even to this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. He says, you know, that's where I've dwelt. I mean, there's a lot to this. It goes on. There's a lot more, you know, the earth is his footstool. You know, there's a lot more to this, this thought of how, what could you ever build that could contain me? And so that was the right perspective that God was kind of sharing with, with David at, at the onset of building the temple. But the, but the idea of David's heart to create a, a place for, that was a, to memorialize or to acknowledge God's presence that was much more of a fixture and stuff was not a bad thing. He just wasn't the guy to build it. He was a man of war. We talked about that in a previous one, but this is what I like. In verse 2, out of those five verses, 1 through 5 of chapter 17 of 1 Chronicles, the second verse says, Nathan said to David, now Nathan is a prophet to David, He's a seer. He's someone that's hearing from God and kind of talking with David on spiritual matters and things and kind of a consultant, as it were. And he said, do all that is in your heart for, for God is with you. Look, you and I want to be cautious when we're talking with friends when we're talking with family, when we're talking with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, maybe even someone who doesn't know the Lord yet, whomever, however, when we're interacting, we have to remember that a lot of times we're representing the Lord and God's heart in a situation because people are placing some trust in, in your insight or maybe your wisdom. Um, for me, I know as a pastor, a lot of times they're, they're trusting pastoral insight and heart for, for the sheep and stuff. And so I want to be aware of that. But just as a Christian, just as a brother in Christ, I'm aware of this. I think about this in this way. Because Nathan spoke too soon. That would be my word for you to think about. Be cautious not to speak too soon soon. Because what did he have to do? He had to go back to the king. The king is excited. The king's like amped out about, oh, this is so great. I'm going to build this. I'm going to do this for God. This is great. And now he's got to go back and tell him, yeah, no, that's not a good idea. God doesn't want you to do that. That's a bummer. So if you're Nathan, you're in a bum, bummer state that you've got to go back and undo what you... He spoke too soon in his representation of the Lord. He didn't really make direct inquiry with God. God then spoke to his heart later. I've had many of these things happen through my lifetime, and I've really learned if I'm able, if someone asks me something and it's a pretty serious matter, and I, believe, and I believe there's a little bit of span of time, I can make quick decisions if I have to, but I prefer to, if I can, would you allow me have a night's rest on that? That's a lot of times what I'll ask people, and I will get back with you tomorrow on it. Because sometimes I really need to just pray and wait on God 
If it's urgent, I understand, and, and, I, and we can move quickly on something, but a lot of times the urgency is just on the human end. It's really nothing that is that urgent. And so when we read something like this, we want to be wise as we represent God with our friends and our family that the counsel that we're giving is actually from the Lord and from the Word and from His heart. God bless you. Have a great day. Be careful not to speak too soon.